Uh, coming back to that uh, part of the answer, when you said about uh, this uh, vicious cycle of uh, this yeah. poverty, then child labor, and the other one is illiteracy, perhaps that when you uh, that is uh, your concept. That means uh, poverty is mo uh, is the single most driving force uh, that leads to child labor. And vice versa, and child and labor leads to. Yes. But uh, in 1997, uh, UNICEF listed four myths surrounding child labor, what is available in their website. That is, child labor is only a phenomenon of the developing countries. Child labor will disappear when poverty disappears. They have called it myth. And that the most child laborers weak in sweat shops, then boycott and pressurizing the government is not the answer uh, to this removal of child labor. So, this they call uh, myth. Myth, yeah. So, uh, uh, somewhere, uh, is there been a divergence of concept? Uh, no, 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 no. If we maintain poverty, then a large number of children from the poor families would go to work or would be compelled to go to work the parents may send them to work because of poverty. But on the other hand, if the children will keep on working, they will remain poor for the whole of their life mm -hmm. and then they will send their children to work because adults are not preferred in jobs in comparison to children. Globally, 168 million, kareeb kareeb, satra karo, children are in full-time jobs. On the other hand, 200 million approximately, 20 crore, adults are jobless. And there are studies which prove that most of these jobless adults are none but the very parents of those children who are given jobs. The parents are not <coughs> preferred in jobs because they are expensive labor. Whereas the children are the cheapest of free labor. So it goes on. So, that, that creates a vicious circle globally and nationally everywhere. So, it is a myth that power, if the poverty is eradicated, child labor will automatically be eradicated. It is a half truth. The full truth is that we have to eradicate child labor simultaneously so that poverty could be eradicated. But we cannot simply say that we can bring all children to school and give them good quality education without dealing with the poverty issues. We have to fight out poverty and we have to fight out illiteracy as well and simultaneously child labor. So, we have also seen and that is a proven fact now through many of the empirical evidences and academic uh, researches which are done none other than by uh, ILO, and UNESCO, World Bank that uh, one single year of primary class in case of a child will help in an increase of 5 to 15 percent income in the later stage when that child becomes uh, elder, grown up w every single year. And every single year of secondary schooling helps in an increase of 20 to 25 percent in the later stage. So, how this is very directly connected and that is a proven fact now. There is another very interesting study conducted by World Bank in 50 countries which prove that If we are able to provide a primary education for all people, all children, to begin with children, it will help in an automatic increase of 0 0.37 percent GDP growth. And if the children are also given the secondary education, it will help in 1 percent additional GDP growth, annual GDP growth. So, for an individual and for a country how important is education one can see and child labor is the biggest impediment in education 
So that's why we have to put an end to child labor immediately without any excuse, without any compromise, without any delay. We have to fight with all these three things simultaneously. Thank you.